In this video, I will show you how to use Microsoft Word completely for free. You can create documents, easily collaborate with others, access all of your Word docs anywhere you are in the world, and you can do this all through a great free product from Microsoft. It's called Microsoft Word for Web. I'll show you how to access this and the basics for how to get started using it. So here I am on office.com, and the secret for getting Microsoft Word for Web is to simply click sign in and sign in using one of your Microsoft accounts. If you've ever signed up for a Microsoft account, let's say a Skype account, MSN account, OneDrive, Xbox, you can sign in using the email address associated with that Microsoft account, and you should be good to go to use Microsoft Word for Web. If you don't have any Microsoft accounts, you might want to click this button, sign up for the free version of Office, put in some basic information, and you'll be set up to use Microsoft Word for Web. Give me a minute to sign into my account, and then I'll resume the video. Now that I'm signed in, it's going to load up my office.com homepage, and you'll see a list of recent documents. But here at the left, notice that there's a list of all of the different Microsoft products and documents that you can create for free on office.com. I'm going to go here to Word and click to open Microsoft Word for Web. Alternatively, you could click this button and then select the specific document type that you want to create. I'll choose Document Word. At this point, we're shifted away from office.com and to the Microsoft Word for Web online interface. If you've used Microsoft Word before, this should look pretty familiar. You've got your document here that represents a page of paper, and we still do have something like the Microsoft Word layout that we have in standard versions of Word. For example, we have tabs, and each tab, when you click it, changes the ribbon below it. Now, this isn't exactly the same ribbon that we have in desktop versions of Word. It's much more limited, as you can see. We don't have every single option that you might be used to, but all of the most commonly used, most important options are here. On the Home tab, we've got your typical font options. We've got centering options, decrease and increase indent, bullets, different font styles, and we also have some more advanced or fancier options like Dictate. We've got the designer as well, which some of you may not be used to, but you can turn on this designer and it gives you some great suggestions to help you make your document look more professional and more beautiful. So even though this is a slimmed down version of Microsoft Word, it really is a powerful and still a pretty feature rich version of Word. Of course, you can just click here on the document to type. I'm gonna type in my title. And of course the flashing cursor shows where you're gonna be typing. If I want to adjust something, I can click to move the cursor to where I want to make a change. I can click and drag to highlight text. I can go to the Home tab and choose my text alignment to center my title. I can also select the text that I've typed, and I could use this Styles button to make this a title or a heading. I'll go with title. I still do want that centered in my case. And then I can just tap Enter on the keyboard and start typing the world's next great novel. In addition to adding text, you can also go here to the Insert tab, and there are many different things that you can add into your Word doc. I can add emojis, special characters and symbols that might otherwise be hard to add to a document. I can put in page numbers into my document, headers and footers. Now you can also click this button here to get a text box that you can use to type in your header, or you can go with this button here for the header and footer. You can add comments, you can turn text into hyperlinks just by clicking and dragging to select part of the text. You can click the link button, put in the address for where you want that link to go, click insert, and now I've got a hyperlink. I can add pictures from various sources. If you use a OneDrive account, you can click here to pull in images that are stored in OneDrive. And if you haven't already watched my OneDrive tutorial, you really need to do that. It's got some great options, especially if you primarily use Microsoft software. In this case, I'm gonna click Bing Pictures, and I'll do a search for Novel. I like this image here. Notice that this option is selected, Creative Commons only. So these are all images that were uploaded to be shared. They have a Creative Commons license for us to be able to use these in our documents. So there's my image, and I can click and drag to move it. One of the classic problems with people using Microsoft Word is with images, it's hard to get it in the right spot, and it seems to affect the text more than you think it should. Well, to resolve that, I can click on the image and then go here to the picture options where I'll find wrap text and I can change that to in front of text or behind text. I'll choose in front of text and that makes the image a lot more manageable. I can now more easily move that image where I want it to be. In addition to adding pictures, we can add tables, we can add page breaks. A lot of the same options that you'll find in the full version of Microsoft Word, you'll find here in Microsoft Word for Web. 
If you want to learn more about the details of using Microsoft Word for Web, I recommend that you watch my tutorial called The Beginner's Guide to Microsoft Word. Most of the things that you'll learn in that video will also apply to Microsoft Word for Web. In Word for Web, you still do have options like word count and what used to be called spell check, now is called editor. But one of the very best features in Microsoft Word for Web is this, the ability to easily and quickly share a document with other people. When you click that button, it pops up with some options for you. You can add people or group names here or email addresses. And anyone whose address you put in this box will be able to do this with your Word doc. So in this case, anyone with a link will be able to edit it. They'll be able to help me change this document. We could co-write a paper together. We could write a novel together or work on a class project together. But in many cases, that's not what you want to do. Instead of sending this link so that people can edit with you, you could click to change that and take off Allow Editing, click Apply, and now the recipients will be able to look at your document when you click Send, but they won't be able to make changes to it. If you don't want to send this necessarily to people's email addresses, maybe you just want to post it online on your website or blog or on Twitter, Facebook, etc. In those cases, you don't need specific email addresses. All you need is to make sure that this is set properly and you need the link to the document. So I'll click Copy Link and this link will allow people to view my document. I could then go to Twitter.com and tweet out that link or I could post it in Weebly on my website or in Microsoft Sway. However you want to make available that link, anyone that clicks it will be able to come and look at this Word document. The final really important thing I need to show you about Microsoft Word for Web is that you can click on File and choose either Save As or Export to turn this Word document into something new. Let's look at the different options. You can choose Save As to download a copy of this Word document to your computer. If you do this, it becomes not just a document that resides only online, but a copy of it will be placed on your computer in traditional .docx format. This will become a real Word document. Here it is. It was downloaded to my computer. And when I click on that, it opens it up in the desktop version of Microsoft Word. So here is my Word document as a real Word document. It's not just an online document. This is an actual downloaded document, DOCX file, that I've opened in the traditional Microsoft Word. In this case, Microsoft Word for Mac, but it would also work on Word for Windows. I'm going to quit out of that. You can also save it as a PDF document, which is a great option. So I hope you can see the potential in using Microsoft Word for Web to be able to completely for free create Word documents, read other people's Word documents, share, collaborate, export your documents, and much more, all for free by using Microsoft Word for Web. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider clicking the Thanks button underneath the video. You can also support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options below the video. Video.